5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome back to the podcast. We are the Renting Bananas. Uh, here we have Jessica, the most awesome person in the world. Yep. And then we have Chris, the lamest person in the world. <laughs> Thanks for that intro. That was really good. I know, right? Do you feel represented by this I intro? I am definitely represented, yes. 100%. <laughs> So I'm Chris, uh, I'm half Chinese, half Vietnamese, born and raised in the UK, and Jessica, what's your version of the banana? Oh, it's complicated. So I am half Swiss and I am half Thai, but I grew up in Switzerland and now I'm in Thailand, but I speak Italian. This yeah. story, every time I have to tell it, it's so long. I, I can't find a way to shorten it. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I always say the thing. Like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm Chinese, or yeah, I'm Vietnamese. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, a lot of people hear me speak Italian, and then at that point, they ask me, so, where are you from? And, wow, it, they don't know that in Switzerland, not many people uh, don't speak just German and French. You know, there's, there's also Italian. And then they ask, are you from Italy? I'm like, no. Are you from Spain? No, I mean, I'm just Swiss, come on. Yeah, and also, like... We didn't know that you didn't have a language called Swiss. We don't have a <laughs> exactly. language called Swiss. Most people don't know that shit, right? Dude, even people who live in Italy. So, Switzerland and Italy, they, they, you know, kind of close. We are a couple of kilometers away from each other. We border with each other. And there's people, whenever I visit Italy, that they find out that I'm from Switzerland. They say, oh, but your Italian is so good. How, how did you learn it? Wow, wow, you uncultured pig. <laughs> That's Italians for you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, sorry. We sorry, don't Italians. Like you. <laughs> sorry, Italians. We love your food. We love your food. It's we, okay. We just want an entire segment <laughs> of yeah, the yeah, market. Right, it's Gone. <laughs> Bye. That's, that's fine. That's fine. There's not that many interesting people in Italy. That's why they're all everywhere else. <laughs> no? Oh, Ouch. shit. Another, another <laughs> hole. A, a, another quarter just, just lost <laughs> away. So Jess, what have you been up to recently? What I've been up to, so since we spoke, I've been transitioning to my UX role. Yeah, you have. Yeah, it's been interesting. So I. You don't like it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> thanks. No. Thanks. It just dissed my whole like five years of my life. No. Thanks. 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 I like it. But it's difficult because I am still transitioning from my previous role. So I am literally uh, doing some marketing in the morning. I am setting up campaigns. Setting up a campaign takes a long time. You know, you have to think, what do people like? If they play certain games, then what other games do they like? Porn. Uh, you everybody likes everybody. porn. <laughs> no, not everybody. Oh, uh, what kind of like porn, 80% too? Of the internet you know, th shit. there's so many segmentation within porn, too. It's complicated. <laughs> gamer porn. How many segments gamer of porn. gamer porn are there? Ooh, have you have you heard about the Star news Wars. about? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> have you heard the news about uh, gamer girls bathwater? Yes, of course. <laughs> but for those who haven't heard about it, do you want to tell us what it is? <laughs> so this girl, um, I think on Instagram, I don't remember her name anymore. I I need to look into it. So she usually sells, you know, pictures on her Patreon, uh, revealing pictures. And at one point, she just decided to sell her bathwater, and she marketed it as Gamer Girl <laughs> Bathwater. And apparently, people bought it, you know, like bottles of it. And it's just, it's just crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. I don't know if this is right, but she's just some white girl that does, like, dresses uh, up in cosplay, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, so she's, like, super cute and got, like, crazy color hair. <laughs> Great. People buy it. But the thing is, Credit where credit is due. I think she it's had fucking a genius, genius idea. Yeah. Uh, here I am, <laughs> doing recording podcasts when I could bath, <laughs> like I could sell bath water. To I be fair, it's just like <laughs> random water, right? She can just open her tap and be like, "Yeah, this is bath water." Like, yeah, and you know, make you can't one really video say, of I don't know, That's not you. Don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> make one video of you bathing, like covering out the important bits, and be like, "Yeah, this is the bath yeah. water." And apparently, some people were stating that they got sick from it. First of all, don't drink why, it. Why, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what did you what do with that water to get sick of it? <laughs> First of all, who takes baths these days anyway? Like, 
Do you know what I mean? Like, it's so inefficient. I think, uh, yeah, it is definitely a lie. It it can't be her bath water. Taking not a always. bath is not about efficiency. Efficiency. That's Sorry, what was thing. that? <laughs> what was that? Efficiency. <laughs> what is it about? It's not that, yeah, because you're like bathing in your own crap, right? Ew. Because you're like floating you just... in it. Because you're dirty when you get in, because you're like, oh, I want to be clean. And then you're bra- like bathing in it. Well, you don't stay there for... 30 minutes you stay there for maybe 15 20 minutes really yeah uh, okay because then okay. you get all wrinkly too you know your fingers so when i was a kid i thought that um when i started to get wrinkly <laughs> my fingers i was about to turn into a shark <laughs> yes that, that happens to a lot <laughs> that's of people that's how biology works right <laughs> have you heard of the aquatic ape theory so yeah. apparently some theorists say that we are actually born from the water and mm-hmm. we actually came onto land because of the food and so like us going wrinkly is just evolution's way of saying like we get better better grip or something i don't know i watched this documentary ages ago it was not really a documentary <laughs> it's more of a mockumentary <laughs> but it was, was quite that on funny history channel <laughs> I don't know what channel it was, but you know when you you get really blazed when you're at university and you start watching these documentaries uh, and you're like, oh my god, we came from the water, this is crazy, and then you have like a slight uh, epiphany and something to talk about when you get high. I don't know. <laughs> Aquatic Bay Theory, check it out for those who are slightly interested in that really shit spiel of it. Hey, anyway. th- that was a uh, you know a very great fear of mine. I didn't want to turn into a shark. Why sharks are awesome. Yeah, but I was scared of them when I was younger. Yeah. Y- you yeah. know, have you seen the movie well, Jaws? Jaws? That was yes. a freaking scary movie when I was dun, dun, younger. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. yeah. I it can play scary. that on the piano. I, said, oh, really? I think so can Aww. everybody. But it's, it's two notes. <laughs> 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 it's two notes repeated over and over again. <laughs> Just slightly, slightly quicker. longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly start, different slow. tempo. <laughs> oh, man. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's very good. <laughs> But that sounded like you sounded so uh, cultured. Like I can play that on the piano. The, the other <laughs> you thing use I can that play. With girls, I can play the Fuck job. Yeah, yeah. It's if there's if there's a piano in the hotel and I'm on a date, <laughs> I'm like I'm getting on it. Jaws, uh, Rugrats, the cartoon I can play, mm. and another one that I figured out myself is The Simpsons. Very cultured. <laughs> Come on, yours, Rugrats, and The Simpsons. Girls go that, crazy for that. Exactly. Is that The Simpsons? Instant panty drop. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. It is. I just played. Uh, I used to play guitar, and uh, the first song that I learned was "Smoke on the Water," mm. which is yeah, six notes, something like that. And I just played that for months, and I refused to learn any other song. I was just, you know, I'm content. Exactly, exactly. I, I just sound cool just playing this intro, and I'm okay with that. And then eventually I, I realized, yeah, I need to learn something else. What have you been up to? Like, let's go back to the question. I've you turned into a shark. <laughs> no? I turned oh. into a shark, and uh, my life has been great since then, you know. I like, oh, I like eating seals, I like eating whales now. They're so nutritious nice. and yes. fatty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lots of fat. Lots of maybe their skin is pretty nice. Mmm, seal skin. Ooh. Do you think it'll taste like a bit like snake or a lot fattier? Because snake doesn't taste nice. Have mm. you have you tried it? No. Snake meat? I don't think I want to try snake meat. It's not that good. It's not that good. One time, me and my friends in Vietnam, he came from Seattle and he was like on a work travel and he saw it on some i guess uh tv channel or youtube mm. thing where you can have snake heart and it's live so one night we got pretty drunk mm. and we decided to go for dinner and he was like oh i want to try like snake blood vodka and the the heart that's beating so we go to this place by the river quite late i think it's like 9 30 uh for a late dinner and yeah you basically purchase a, a snake mm. and then they'll cut it in front of you like they'll kill it in front of you get the heart out and then you they place it in your hand and you're just supposed to like down it right just so i had a video of this it was so funny but yeah and then like he ate the heart like live it was like still pulsating then they use the blood and, and they put it in some vodka and you do shots and then they make like six different dishes with snake like like barbecue in like congee and like some like stir fried stuff it was okay that's like a very adventurous meal uh but yeah that was that the last sounds... time i had snake that sounds scary. 
Oh, well, it's weird as fuck. <laughs> like, I wouldn't do it again. I mean, I didn't eat the snake heart mm. because why the fuck would you? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm gonna, you know, pass this one. Yes. I- I'm okay. But I've been, yeah, transitioning to my role as a UX designer now, and I am, huh, facing some difficulties learning how to work with a remote team. So my problem is that I am the only one in the design team and in the development team in my uh, Thai office, while the rest of the team, they're all in Seoul in Korea, which is a problem not just because uh, of the communication, you know, we need to we need to keep each other accountable and always, you know, always know what the others are doing, but there is also a language barrier in which I speak English and they don't speak that much English and all the notes are in Korean and I'm just dude please wow so oh wait remote team how many designers uh one UI designer and then we have the project manager uh we have the owner of the product basically and the developers they're uh, all there and I'm just the only person here how many developers uh now we have two okay so you have like a, a quite a small team so in theory, it should be easier to communicate, right? Not too many complexities in terms of people yes. and, and QA and stuff. Okay. But um, the biggest problem is the language barrier. Right, right. And are documents and, and things like that, like documentation, is all written in English or a different language? It is written in English, but uh, sometimes they do have Korean headlines. Uh, in, if we have a card on Jira, for example, yeah. Um, the main title will be in Korean and then the translation in English. Wow. And sometimes the translation in English it's a little bit uh, inaccurate or it's a little bit confusing so I'm just there trying to figure out what is this. Wow. <laughs> and the thing is that they okay. have to write it in Korean because the developers they're, n- they're not really good at speaking English okay. while the head of the product he I would say his level is medium and the developers level is very poor but the developers need to know what they're doing so that's why they left the notes in korean but you guys are an international company are people not required to speak english and to work in english on that level or because it's just like the team is like a constraint uh it's a problem with hiring actually sure so right now in korea uh i've heard that there is a boom in people who want you know to start startups it's same here in thailand a lot of people are you know becoming digital entrepreneurs they are trying to build platforms and apps so the demand for developers has increased i guess skyrocket and now it's very hard to hire good people and also you have you know naver and uh, what what's the other company uh, neighbor cacao hiring like crazy, oh, and yeah, they're the, one yeah. of the two, really the two, yeah, very popular companies. I would say it's the same as um, Google and Apple. Right, right. Do right, you right. have you ever been to Korea? I have. I went. Yeah. Once. So they don't have Google Maps there. They have neighbor. Oh, is that the replacement? I yeah. Yeah, Google Maps yeah. wasn't that good. Like what I I used it, but. It wasn't that good. Yeah, no. But cacao is really good. Yeah, they have their own thing. And uh, what I've noticed, so uh, we went for a gaming event there. And one of the things that we were trying to do some user acquisition, so we had the people um, walking to our booth, and then they had to register to try some of our games. And they all used, I think it was Naver email. They don't even... Gmail is not even that popular. There. Oh wow! So Naver just really copied yeah, what Google has it's done. It's a monopoly. Wow! Yeah, I never knew just that. Just in Korea. That's cool. Okay. Okay. It is. I've never really like yeah, I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it's about. It's funny how they do maps and then they yeah. do emails. Do they do search? Yeah, they're just the replacement for Google there. Okay. Google okay. is not that popular. It's cool. All right. How have you been trying to combat this remote? Do you do like daily stand-ups? Do you, is there lots of documentation that you write? Or you have regular syncs? Like, how does it work? And how do you get over that, I guess? For now, I just... In the beginning, I didn't... I wasn't that involved in the team. 
but now that I am, I started asking the head of product to start, you know, talk to me. The biggest problem for me is that being alone, sometimes they forget that, hey, you know, I'm here to please talk to me. Yeah, I've been there. So the way that I'm solving it now is just, I just poke them all the time. Hey, I did this. Hey, I did that. Uh, what are you guys up to? Every you know, Just talking to them through messaging. Yep. And uh, I ask them to leave some, every time they have meetings, to let me know, first of all, that they had meetings and to leave me some notes. It doesn't have to be, this person said this, it doesn't have a detailed minute, but I need a summary, like a couple of bullet points, like what's going to happen, what's the goal. So I hope that it will get better. Right now, we are just, both of us, my side and their side, we're trying to learn and trying to understand what's best for the product. Yeah, makes sense. It it takes a while for people to, to gel and work together, right? I think this agile way of describing stages of how a team become high performing in terms of like forming, norming, mm. I think it's still, I, I can't remember what it is. Let me have a little look on Google. Google that. Yeah, so it's storming, forming, no, it's forming, storming, and norming, and then performing. So those are the stages uh-huh. of your teams. So if you wanted to check that out, that would be quite cool mm. in terms of you can recognize how to get from one stage to another, and then also like the things that sort of clarify your team as a group, and then you can try and move into this performing area. Um, or at least just, yeah, uh, clarifying it, right? Um, mm. Also, my team doesn't really take notes at all, and it's mm. frustrating. Oh, yeah. So frustrating, because then it's like everybody has a, a different interpretation of what we discussed in the meeting, yeah. and there's no like clear whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. the hardest part, especially with the language barrier. The company I was working for before, um, they, I was the product manager and I had a team of Russian, uh, Thai and German and the whole company spoke 100% English. Yeah. So it was way easier to communicate with them and the English that we were in the same office. I, every yes. time they would, every time they had a problem, they literally would just come up to me and we would try to discuss it together and solve problems. So it was way faster and way easier to communicate. But now it's it's complicated. Well, at least you guys are in similar time zones. Yeah, there are two hours uh, ahead. That's But also that's why we start our days a little bit later. Yep. So we are sync with them. I, I was working for a company who was based in Mexico. So it's oh. 14 hours. Because I was first the only designer there mm. and then we moved some over to Vietnam mm-hmm. but we would have to work with Mexico and yeah it's 14 hours so sometimes we have to sacrifice right we'll have like 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. team meetings it, yeah it was a bit it was a bit bad mm. I didn't I didn't really like it and I, I couldn't really have a routine yes yeah I mean work was flexible enough but mm-hmm. it was it's just hard you know yeah being completely remote it's really really hard you don't really feel part of the team yeah. I mean, there's ways, there's stuff that you can do, but I, I just didn't like working like that. Yeah, it's, well, I just started. Maybe it will get better. I, I think also it will. voiced I think it will. my concerns and they've been open and they also, you know, understand. And I understand also their view that they have to keep some stuff in Korea, mostly for the developer. So I decided that uh, I will not be as involved in the development side, which for me, it's, uh, it's new because before I was the person talking directly to the developer and this is how I'm used to work. But I will just focus more on talking to the project manager and the head of product and uh, with the UI guy. So it's going to be, well, they're going to take care of the developer while I'm going to take care of mostly of the user experience, uh, talking with the UI and so on and so forth. Yeah, that makes sense. But, you know, good product teams are always together, right? Like. Because yes. developers will notice things that we, as designers, won't, right? Or, yeah, or that's what I love the most right. about talking to the developers. Yeah, it's, it's really not, good. Yeah. It's not just um, about making a good product, but I, al- I learned so much talking yes. to the developers. Yeah. And it's crazy. And they notice, because they work so closely with the system, they see problems faster than I can most yeah. of the time yeah uh, like, yeah well the code is gonna be it's gonna have to be this 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 what if this problem comes up uh, yeah. oh I didn't think about it like good thinking 
So that's what I love about the product uh, part and working with the developers. <laughs> that was just me cracking open a bottle of wine and then he smacked myself in the face. But we have wine. <laughs> we got <Woo>! wine. <laughs> <laughs> wine break. Yeah, you're quite right. I, I learned so much from developers at the beginning of my career and I'm still learning now from them. Yeah, you need to sometimes get technical into the nitty gritties, mm -hmm. uh, especially with like different use cases and, and scenarios. And also, like, you need to know if this is physically possible, right? In terms of constraints, what are the trade-offs that you're making, and yes. when, and when is it okay to spend more time on something, versus when we can launch like quicker, and we don't care. We just want to validate that on the market. I think it's going to be hard, but you know, uh, something that you'll get used to, and I think you'll figure out lots of different hacks around it. I will learn. I will learn. All right. Cool. Um, transition into design. Great. All right. Well, uh, I'll talk about what happened, what I've been up to. So I recently just redesigned my portfolio. When I say redesign, I don't mean like reconstruct all the content and, and rewrite everything, but really just to give it a new face for 2020. Hmm. Yeah, the theme was simplification. So it's just super simple. And I didn't want to like bombard whoever saw it with all this content just kind of highlights some things but I also added this thing that I've been working on uh, even in my previous company uh, career ladders for designers I think it's super important because a lot of times you go into a startup and there's not something already set or you don't know how to get a promotion or how to become better in your craft mm -hmm. because there's so many things as a as a product designer you need to do mm -hmm. and everybody has different skills so how do you map that out for the future so we just did that in our team now it's it's quite interesting uh, sort of inherited from my previous company and if you guys would like to use it uh, check out the portfolio I'll leave a link in the show notes and then also uh, a new process uh, design process for start uh, not necessarily just design but sort of product development as well I'm not touching the developer side but really like product management and design so that's quite interesting uh, so if, yeah, if you guys are interested, please check it out. Hmm. So I did that. I did it actually in a weekend, which was really nice. You're right. I didn't spend in too much weekend. time on it. Yeah. It, oh, maybe just one day. Wow. I think I, I, I did it all in one day. did every single page. It was probably like, I don't know, 20 pages. But it's fine because I'm using Squarespace. <laughs> right? I'm not coding or anything like that. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, and then I'm just tweaking it as we go. Uh, also, I bought a new camera. <laughs> Jessica just looked at it and then decided, like, really loudly. So, uh, <laughs> you. We discussed about this. Yeah, tell me, tell me about my. Whenever I start a new hobby, this podcast, uh, I used to do a little bit of streaming on Twitch. My philosophy is that you start, you don't spend that much money on it first. Because first of all, you have to find out, will I actually keep doing that? I am a person who has a lot of interests. I love music, I love gaming, and all of this, uh, at one point, it will start stuck up on my bank. Yep. And my wallet will start crying and feel empty and lonely. So this is what I do right now. I start small. Do I? Will I stick with this hobby? Will I not? I will not go and buy the best gear. But in the future, if I see that there is that this really brings me joy, then I will invest in something a little bit more uh, premium. But until then, it's just for fun and giggles. Then I will not spend. How much money did you spend on this camera? Two million dollars. No, <laughs> come on, man. It's not that premium. It was it like is premium. Yeah. Uh, so it's the Canon G Seven X Mark III. Six hundred dollars. That's expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's a toy, right? See? Who cares? Man? It's not so a toy. The brilliant thing about being in your 30s is mm. you can finally buy stuff that you've always wanted in your 20s. Adult toys. Adult not toys. Those kinds. Like, you know, yeah, not that. <laughs> yeah. But toys are like things things you like and uh, I don't know, why, why do we work, right? Treat yourself. We work because... In the future, when I don't have a job, <laughs> I want to have food on my table. <laughs> it's fine. You can cook. You know. I, I want my kids to go to a normal school. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want my kids to go to school at all. That's the thing. I'm sacrificing. You know, my yeah. I'm buying my you toys want, now, so my kids don't have toys. 
That's the problem. You want to go to college? No, daddy's going to buy a new camera. Fuck you. <laughs> Bro, college is free in the UK. Oh, yeah. So is... Oh, well, no. I was going to say uh, so is university, but I was like, no, no, no. They get a loan, right? That they don't necessarily have to pay back if they move to Asia. What did I say? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> but yeah, you're new camera. Look, yep. So, wait. I asked you... One of the questions was that do you know already how do you want to set up your... Like, you bought this for your... You, like, an idea you have for a YouTube channel. That's right. So, and I asked you, do you have an idea of the format? You know, maybe you don't even need a camera. That was my point. <laughs> and now... <laughs> yeah, what I said was, I like doing my use, uh, YouTube research. Like, channels I really like, videos I really like. To sort of get inspiration and to sort of see what my own style would be. And this is one really, really good video. If you haven't seen it... It's called The History of Japan. And it's like this video that's like, I think, I'm gonna Google it. either 9 or 13 minutes long. But it's just like super crappy graphics, really shitty like pictures. But the story element and the storytelling was so good that I'm like, oh, this is kind of what I want to make. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just like kind of silly, right? So yeah, it turns out that I don't need a camera, but <laughs> I want to merge it. I want to merge it with other sort of things I, I need. So I'm going to at least try it out. My goal was actually this weekend to, to at least get most of the footage, but because I have the virus, no, I'm joking, <laughs> I don't have the virus, but I'm just kind of like, no, I just got a bit lazy, and uh, <laughs> but I wrote the script, so check out One Minute UX on YouTube, and hopefully by the time you hear this, I'll have something on there, if not, watch that space, because uh, I want to launch really stupid one minute clips of uh, UX tutorials. <laughs> Hopefully that was a good sell. Yeah, was a good sell. Are you going to sponsor this podcast if you get big? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think the only wow. correct answer was yes there, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's 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 talk terms. You know, let's let's take this offline. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What if I get big first? <laughs> Will I sponsor? Well, how am I gonna sponsor? Like, oh, let's let's do it a race. Who gets? Hmm. Let's say. Views? One do? no, one thousand subscribers first. Let's make it. Let's make it a race, and you know we inspire each other to get to that point. Okay, what are you doing? I'm uh, doing Twitch gaming, Twitch and streaming. Okay. Uh, I want to upload to YouTube because uh, Twitch as a platform, it's really terrible for discoverability. So what you have to do, you have to cross, um, you know, put yourself on different platforms and cross posting and everything cross promote that's the word that I was looking for <laughs> yeah you have to cross promote uh, which means that you have to make highlights on YouTube post on Instagram Twitter uh, apparently now TikTok is big yes we're <laughs> you have about to make that. TikTok, TikTok videos. Yeah, uh, yeah. there is one that I love um, and it's uh, this song is like oh na 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 oh na 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 <laughs> and they're okay. doing this dance with their feet like two people you have to can we do it later <laughs> we can try it later yeah <laughs> then, yeah sure uh, oh, i tried yeah. so bad with someone on on tiktok <laughs> well now nah, we can post it on, we can record it on tiktok <laughs> and then i need to check out this Instagram. app man like what is the range you don't know okay. about tiktok oh, well we spoke about it right but uh yeah let's let's check it out and and see what we can do from there. Oh yeah, we did. Actually, YouTube's great for discoverability, right? The recommendation engine is. is super good. It and is. And I almost always watch recommended videos because that it just yeah. knows what I like. Right? Correct. It's so fucking good. There was <laughs> there was one week, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, where my mum was moving house and like she was doing the setup herself or whatever. Or I helped her and I forgot to change the YouTube to like um her channel mm -hmm. so for like the whole week i was getting all these like chinese karaoke <laughs> like recommendations i'm like mom stop using youtube it's ruining my recommendation i got so pissed the first thing i did when i went back to vietnam was literally just to like switch her youtube default account so it just goes to something else that i don't give a shit about I had to like manually remove these like chinese fucking things so i was like oh so annoying mother <laughs> Don't watch these shit on my account. That's great. But we like share the account, right? So she has to, yeah, it's weird. <sighs> my YouTube family recently increased. I convinced my co so I pay for YouTube premium hmm. and I finally have a family member on it and now it's great. <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Like 
they join and it's cheap. Like I don't. Uh, you can it's have not like Netflix. It's the same as Netflix. Okay. You have your own individual membership, and then uh, you can have the family where five people at the same time or four, or whatever, they can watch uh, Netflix, right? So in this case, with YouTube, you can have a family. Uh, it's up to five people, and of course, the more people you have, the lower the cost. Because they are paying you the difference, or you're sharing the money. Oh, we're just sharing. So oh, okay. Yeah. That doesn't work. Now we with play me. 50-50. I pay. I pay for Netflix, and everybody just like. Oh, do you have a Netflix account? Cool. Oh, really? Like, yeah. So everybody's Parasite. on it, family. Yeah, I know. It's sponges, man. <laughs> so it's like, I can't even quit Netflix if I wanted to. Like, unsubscribe because other people are using it, so... Oh, you should just do it. <laughs> no, I can't. I, I'm so addicted. It's, it's fucking unreal, man. It's, yeah, it's worse than alcoholism. <laughs> I recently uh, logged in on Netflix on my mom's tablet because okay. she one of the things now she's visiting and one of the things she asked me before coming here she was uh she wanted to watch this thai tv show but she couldn't find it in switzerland because um in switzerland they show different uh programs right right and i logged in on net on my netflix account and i told her this you can access for two weeks but before you go i'm going to log off because i want my netflix back <laughs> for two weeks you can use it you can watch whatever thai tv show you want to but after that you're cut out it's like i'm cutting you out and <laughs> no <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's why vpn will be so great right we can just tune into like the american netflix which try to teach better. my mom how to use a vpn yeah yeah <laughs> no thanks <laughs> No I tried to teach her how to use a computer, and I just I just give up. I'm like, no, no, that's it. My mom had a pretty good setup. Back in the UK, she had like this monitor at the end, like stuck to a wall, and then a, a, like a PC, and you can just. Uh, she was like using this like wireless mouse, and she could like mm -mm. watch TV or not TV videos that we download for her on VLC, like mm -hmm. dramas or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she knows like the fundamentals of how to start the machine how to play the video mm -hmm. and to play the next one like that is good but that knowledge has gone completely out the window <laughs> since youtube even even like connected to the internet she struggled with um oh, yeah <laughs> it's funny how they just forget like like you know the steps to to do something right it's not like learning the tech again <laughs> it's yeah it's interesting uh, my mom had this problem on her phone. She downloaded something and it kept giving her advertisement on the phone. Okay. And I literally had to stay there and clean up her phone. And I told her, Mom, you have to give me 500 baht for customer service. <laughs> and then give me another 500 baht because I fixed another thing. It was just fixing, fixing all the time. The first day I spent the whole day on her phone and on her own tablet just fixing things. Do you think on this subject... Mm. Because there's like YouTube for kids, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if the interface is that much different. I, I imagine it's uh, more of a content filter. Mm -hmm. But isn't there like some sort of thing that s other startups can do, which is like old proof? <laughs> the, the, the recent technologies are like Facebook for old people or Google for old people. Do you think that would ever happen? Or do you think... We don't give a shit about them, and it's <laughs> like they will slowly fade out into the mist, and then our generation will be the old people, and we already know. Hmm, I think there is something already for that, Okay. but I have never seen it. I guess I just don't get marketed for that, right. but I'm pretty sure there is. You Even if you go to your settings, you know, the fact that you can change the size of the character, that's thought for people who can't read like small characters i was browsing through reddit and my mom like was you know picking like an asian mom <laughs> yeah she was picking on my phone and trying to understand what i was looking at and she asked me can you really read this like the text yep. I'm like yeah yep. no problem and she just her face <laughs> is just trying to read it's tr she's trying to read through my reddit and then she looks at uh, i showed her a meme about the coronavirus and she was just, well, what What do you mean? <laughs> Mom, you're so old. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess accessibility will be bigger, right? When we talk about inclusive design, it's like designing for people with different abilities. Uh -huh. So you have your, like, your high contrast, your bigger text, even like voice commands Ooh. for different things. Click on this link and like, I think Google showed, uh -huh. showed that off. 
uh, and Apple showed that off recently. That was that was pretty cool. So one of the thing I noticed, uh, what was it? on PowerPoint, mm. uh, on PowerPoint, every time I paste a picture now, they have the alt text for uh, impaired people, yep. visually impaired people, yeah. And they tell you, you know, e they try to encourage you to add some alt text to describe the picture. Uh, mm. Usually it's generated uh, from PowerPoint, but you know, you can have an input and say uh, maybe it's the e picture is two people looking at a computer. You can add it to diverse people looking at the desktop or whatever. So right. it's there's, I think there's big leaps about that. I also used to follow a blind girl on YouTube, mm. and uh, her whole thing was telling people how she lives her her normal life as a blind person, and her phone is completely black, and she just uses voice control. Yeah. So like, she can browse uh, Facebook, social medias in general, and it's just like reading it to her. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I'd love I to see how that works, right? You should do a challenge. <laughs> 24 hours without... <laughs> yeah. With, with the black screen and just see how how would you use it. Yeah. If you could Totally it. different, right? Designing for that voice interface. Like, so different because there's a, a million and one use cases. Or a million, like... Because yeah. you have to tailor it to the app as well, right? What can you do? What are your options? Mm -hmm. On that subject... I saw. I think Thailand's really good at this, like really good at this in terms of on public transport, where the the staff at the station will help a blind person on and off. Mm. The other day, I was walking just to the the train station, and yeah, there was some person from the train like walking this blind person to where they wanted to go, and it was like clearly, mm. you know, out of their way, but they still did it. That's really nice. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't seen mm. that much, even in these like super developed countries. Yeah. Usually, blind people are left to their own devices or they have like a dog or something but like in yeah. in Thailand I've seen really good examples of that I would be scared to be blind here in Bangkok so would I man there's so much so <laughs> much like obstacles so many dangers yeah so many obstacles she this girl on YouTube she has a dog and she was explaining how the dog uh, guide her through traffic mm. and my only thought during the whole video is just that this would never work in Thailand, girl. <laughs> nope. If you if you lose your sight, leave Thailand. <laughs> it's yeah. too dangerous now. The thing is, right, the comparable thing for me is in Vietnam, you almost don't see that many disabled people. It's kind of like hidden, like in society. Mm. It's really weird. And they're not around that much, right? And like people mm -hmm. here in Thailand, it seems like people are just getting on with their lives. Mm -hmm. In Vietnam, it's like potentially they're begging. That's kind of the time where you see uh, you know disabled people the most, and it's it's kind of saddening, right? Mm. Um, yeah, it's it's weird how how the the contrast is between two countries. Yeah. yeah. Mm. One of the things that I notice here is that there's a lot of uh, how you call it uh, mute people, like people who can't talk. Yeah. Because I always see them like gesturing to each other. Oh, it's super okay. common here. Oh. I've seen at least once or twice a month people talking to each other like with their hands. Yeah. Hey, it's crazy. Yeah. I don't I don't know why it's so common here in Thailand, but also there's way more people here in Thailand than there is in Switzerland. Yes. So the right. chance that you meet someone disabled is way higher. Yeah. And maybe they're just more accepted in society, right? Mm. So that's why you see more of them. In Vietnam, the reason why we don't see it, my hypothesis, is that they're not accepted and they're not part of like normal life, which is terrible, which is completely saddening, yeah. right? You know, it is what it is. I don't know. It's kind of made me a bit depressed. Aww. I don't, can we move on? Yeah, we can. <laughs> Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> don't be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go back to the YouTube channel. Mm. One of the things that uh, we talked about last week uh, is that you, of course, want to be an entrepreneur and you want to be, how, how do I call it? Financially, Financially independent. independent. Yeah. So, yeah. Elaborate on that, sir. Elaborate. Well, I can't imagine me working for someone for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Even now, you know, I've had jobs in the past, and I've always kind of done things my own way. For example, 
I barely go into work at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, I go in sometimes. I, I'm leading the the team there, but I feel I don't know. I just kind of like to work on my own or like make up my own rules. I'm not very good with sort of authority figures. I've never been at school. I've I've never been growing up working at my parents' place. Uh, yeah, of course I want to be financially independent because I want to work for something I care about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think that's kind of my destiny. Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. I, it's definitely something to do with design, but eventually that's what I want to do. Um, mm-hmm. And these hobbies and stuff hopefully can lead to somewhere, like design did, but mm-hmm. it's okay if it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's my take on it. Uh, whether or not I'm going to do it after this job is still something I'm really, really considering. Mm -hmm. So when I leave this job, potentially I will finally have the cojones to do it. Uh, I actually started, like I registered for a company when I hit 30 in Vietnam because I was super excited about it. And then it just didn't go anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Just with work and with travel and stuff, Mm -hmm. nothing happened because I was traveling a lot for work. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what else to do next. Like I don't know if I want to like move to another company laterally uh, I don't know where else is up I do not want to be like an IC or individual contributor anymore so I think it's now or never right I've got yeah. I've got some savings as long as I don't buy cameras <laughs> I'm good right I can at least survive for maybe so I worked it out right in terms of surviving day to day I could probably survive for three years not making any money and paying the same rent and, and, and you know utilities utilities and allowance and stuff for my parents but that's not investing anything into this startup right mm-hmm. so yeah I can potentially do that I, I really want to explore it and I think Asia is the perfect place to do it as well yeah, yeah. things are cheaper like yeah just makes sense I mean that's why that's I am guessing the route that you're going to take with your YouTube channel and the podcast, you know, but yep. is that, like, do you want to be a content creator or is it more you want to own a business or you want to diversify your portfolio where you have, you know, something where you can have yep. your creativity outlet and on another side you have, you know, something more, I, I don't want to say sustainable, but a little bit more uh, traditional. I don't know how to call it. Traditional ways of making money is fairly dead. I wouldn't say like completely dead because people still work in these old institutions and you know the the, the typical mm-hmm. work, right? Like mm-hmm. we still do the nine to five or whatever. Yeah, the creative way of making money is yeah, it's the time is now or never, right? Like there's so many things, there's so many ways that people generate revenue and, and make a good income for themselves. It's just it's just crazy and we never know right Mm -hmm. so for me i don't know if a creative project is one thing and then work is another ideally because i think about work so much anyway in my personal time it's one thing Mm -hmm. i can't imagine me splitting that up so a content creator wise i don't know i don't know if i'm one good at content how much time i need to learn it uh and and a bunch of things i don't know but i do know that the way i work is like sprinting versus a marathon i don't Mm. like to work on things that it it takes a lot of time to see some progress i like doing Mm. these like small little projects measure it or at least see the impact and then move on if i'm not interested in it so something around that and i'm not super interested in running a business Mm -hmm. like all the boring stuff that comes yeah. along with it is really boring right like i yeah. i don't like it 100 percent. yeah i just kind of like to work on projects i like um so i don't know what that is hmm. trying to figure it out is it podcasting is it you like youtube channels is it teaching design to more junior designers mm-hmm. you know those are just some things that i'm thinking about yeah what about you like surely you don't want to do this nine to five right you want to be a gamer <laughs> that streams Yes, all I dream about is just play games for a living. Isn't that the dream? Just do what you love and it's your job. One thing is I agree 100% with you. I don't want to run a business. So I don't think 
I would ever be interested in becoming an entrepreneur because becoming an entrepreneur, uh, first of all, has a lot of risks and I am so risk adverse. I, that's why I don't gamble. Uh, I'm just too conservative. I, I would rather bet on something that it's rather safe rather than um, something that it's risky. Like if I have the two choices, you know, high risk, high reward or uh, lower risk, but also uh, lower reward, I will take that route. So this is the kind of person that I am. And becoming an entrepreneur is it's just too much. I think it's, there's a whole stigma around it, right? I don't think it is that much. Like, there has been entrepreneur like since since ever, right? Since right. like humans began, right? Trading fucking seeds and shit. My parents were, but I think it's just labeled wrongly now. I think entrepreneurs, one of those people that you see like super like you know, <laughs> I don't know, just super risky, and they're just like you know, bet everything like a like an Elon Musk type, you know, investing yeah. in his company as soon as he got sold PayPal, all this shit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if if you if you want to be a content creator for a living, then you are your own business, right? You're your own brand, so therefore you are an entrepreneur. Oh yeah, that definitely. But that's why if I would become an entrepreneur, it would just base on me, on my image, on my persona. I don't want to take care of accounting, okay? I don't want to take care of other people because that would give me major anxiety. <laughs> major yeah. yeah you have to take care of someone else and make sure that you make money so they pay for themselves like that's that's a lot of responsibility on yourself yeah but if you make enough money you're gonna have to get like a, a film crew like people to edit your stuff <laughs> they'll have to do accounting right like when you monetize your stuff right you have to get like a marketing expert maybe you yeah. are one already but like y your time is like better spent recording yeah. yourself like you would have to outsource that yeah, yeah, yeah immediately of course i wouldn't want to make uh i guess that's what i mean with a traditional business where you have you know you have your office and you have your employees and you have to hire blah blah, blah. while what i want is something a little bit more flexible yeah where if there's business i'm gonna hire you and you're gonna work for me until there's business but if something happens i don't have to make sure that you're gonna have bread on your table tomorrow <laughs> yeah right like just like um hire people for project length yes yeah like yes. hey i'm doing some filming in fucking alaska you want to come mm -hmm. with me for a week mm -hmm. edit it and then and if i get to the point where i need to hire editors and i need to hire a videographer i am hoping by that time I am making tons of money, which means I also have a tons of saving and I have tons of investment and then I can yeah i I can splurge and make sure that the people working for me uh are taken care of but until then i uh, yeah it's it's just something that in the beginning I was very attracted to when I was younger I thought I'm gonna have a business and I'm gonna be this super uh, career driven woman uh, and with tons of businesses and I'm gonna be super successful and then I realized how much work <laughs> it is and I don't think I'm ready for it mm -hmm. I, I know myself um, I would rather be an employee than um, opening a business Mm. I would rather be the... I don't even aim to be a CEO anymore. I used to be, I thought, yo, CEO, that's like the ultimate career goal. But now, <laughs> I would just be happy being, oh, well, I guess CEO or something like that. That would be the ultimate career goal. But I'm okay being some super higher up in a company, in an established company that gives me enough security for the future. Yeah, you're basically gambling with other people's money, right? If exactly. You're, if you're an executive, you're like, yeah, I just take the paycheck, get a fat bonus, but I don't really. It's not. I'm not risking myself on the line, and you, you can tune out as well. Correct. I don't know. I mean, of course, that life sounds great, right? To be running something in a in a big corporation, and you're taken care of. But there's also something that it doesn't feel like it's completely yours, right? So I think that's the attractiveness of it for me. Like yeah. having your own thing. But yeah, hiring and managing people is like a full-time job anyway. 
Um, so when do you actually get to focus on the the cool projects or mm-hmm. the or the the passion projects? I find that more interesting mm-hmm. than I do you know hiring and managing necessarily i like to I like you know that stuff is still important and i and i and i do it now but i find yeah th- these passion projects are way better it's kind of like you're a film producer and when there's a film you're like oh you try to get everybody together try to organize a bunch of stuff and then when the film's finished it's like done right mm-hmm. so but i think there's a lot and lot more freelancers nowadays that you could it could really well happen where you don't need someone full time. You just contract them for whatever time, and and, and they can just work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would like to work in that capacity. I think that would be really cool. You meet lots of p- different people as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do the same job for the rest of my life. I want to be able. I want the freedom to be able to work on different things, but I also want to see. Because I'm fairly new to this whole working thing. I've been working since three years as a ca- know, career as a, stuff. Yeah, okay. career stuff, which is not you know bartending or <laughs> right, right, trying right. to get money from other sources. <laughs> oh, that sounds that sounds very dodgy. But let's no. skip that. Let's no, it's fine. We won't delve into dodgy. other sources. <laughs> I was bartending, you know, just being a hooker for a bit. No, 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 no. Giving away some weed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> but Could I'm be. fairly yeah. new, and yeah. I want to see how it is working for a big company. Having the thing, you have such a small part in huge project. It, every time you go watch movies, and you stay uh, for the credits, and you see all of these names, and you think... You had, like, this person had such a small part, but all of these people together brought up this movie. And it's crazy if you think about it. Like, how many people are just, like, up to the top managing all of these teams and the outsourcing teams? And it's just it's just crazy. I want to see how that pans out. You know McDonald's has one million employees? One million. Yeah, so they can have their own army if they wanted to like some countries wow. don't even have that in terms of <laughs> infantry right i think like Amer- america and china has it but yeah so like imagine if mcdonald's went to war like the whole global McDonald's went to war with <laughs> thailand they could potentially win in terms of like force numbers wow. but yeah that's crazy like i i don't know about working for larger companies i don't believe it's so satisfying mm-hmm. because one is super messy and all the big companies are pretty messy as it mm-hmm. is i think being in this environment of a startup is so much better because you get to do lots and lots of different things you're not just a one-dimensional person because in big companies you you really specialize right mm-hmm. there's someone that's like really good at for example ui and that's all you ever are but actually mm-hmm. you can probably design the product end to end if you wanted to mm-hmm. so they don't sometimes they don't give you that chance in bigger companies mm-hmm. But there's that shift of like, for example, Facebook is a big fucking conglomerate, right? They do a bunch of things, like right. But they try to operate in like you know self-sufficient teams that make decisions on their own. I think bigger startups are doing that. But like, if you're talking about like one of these old-school media companies or banking companies, I don't think it'll be like something you would like. But of course, it's yeah, it's it's your own perspective, right? And, <laughs> and even now, I'm working in this company that's not even that big. I think it's. 400 people it's actually smaller than my last company that i worked in but because it's owned by a conglomerate in thailand and we inherit a lot of these like old uh, traditional way of doing things even like the hr department is shared between all these business units and yeah it's just terrible in terms of like the way they do things you don't know how they got so successful right because you're like well so wasteful or it's not efficient enough and startups they, like, in terms of work processes you're always innovating right or you're doing something that's new or you're trying to hack it somehow and you get chances to sort of step out your comfort zone when i worked for this company called tiny pulse i think there was 15 of us so a bunch of us was involved in hiring at the beginning like redefining it what does it mean you know different questions different processes and that was really cool but we didn't have to do that. And like in a bigger company, you're going to get to touch that. As uh, someone running my own department, I don't even know how much my employees are making. And I'm like, 
Why can't you tell me this? They're like, no, we can't tell you this. It's like confidential. How? Yeah, it, it's terrible, right? Because when you're hiring someone, you kind of want to communicate the range that they might be getting or you can see if they're worth that amount of money. It's really weird. Like, I don't know, this is, this is probably not the only organization that does this, right? But you just can't make decisions on your own or you just have to involve more parties and there's more politics. Hmm. startups are really cool and that's why I like it it's just you can move a lot quicker right make mistakes that people don't necessarily blame you for it's more fun yeah that's true I love working in startups I don't think I would ever finish my career life working in a big company yeah. but I do want to see it I yeah. think the experience that I would get there from looking at the more if, well you say that it's not efficient but I guess uh, bigger companies, you know, like Google, Facebook, whatever, they have, there's a reason why they're so successful and there must be something in their system that mm. makes it work. Well, yeah, sure. And I want to, my goal working in a big company would be trying to, you know, hack that. Why right. are these big companies successful? What are, how do the people work? Cause I, I have no idea. I've heard the stories, I've read the articles, but being there and reading about it, it's, it's completely different, right? Sure, sure. But definitely, yeah. I don't think... I think the startup world fits more to... It doesn't have to be necessarily a startup, but the freelancing work, uh, working for a smaller company, where, yes, your impact is bigger on the final product. Yeah, you get to make decisions, and you get to sort of guide it in a way you see fit. I think it's just more fun. I think you get to yeah. get closer to people, right? Yeah. As well. So it's like you actually know your team and you know you guys go out or whatever but in a large corporation sometimes that doesn't necessarily happen right mm, that's so true but also one of my other things i was going to bring up is that is it because of the name brand like if you work at like a google amazon a facebook you're just immediately on the map in terms of employment is that something that you're like oh i you know i i, I really strive to work at these big companies because of the name and the reputation because I know that's a syndrome for lots of people in mm -hmm. Asia especially is it uh, for schools uh, and for companies yeah people love that because it's like extra credibility that you can show off right hmm yeah isn't that in the Western world too this person worked for Twitter and now they are sure. a big shot sure sure uh, yeah, I, I think so. I think it's everywhere. But mm. for some reason, I've seen it in Asia a lot more than I have other places. Interesting. So my ex used to run a school. Yeah, every everybody wanted to go to, obviously, the Ivy Leagues and, and stuff. But even so, as they wanted to just travel abroad for school because they mm -hmm. know American schools hold way more credibility than Vietnamese schools, right? I don't know, it's, it's a weird thing, and I've heard her say things like the parents put a lot of pressure in terms of like international education, right, just because of the credibility. Mm. Like you have your NUS in Singapore, you know, there's a bunch of really good schools in China now, Australia's really good, known for education as well. So they like, these, these parents work super hard, even if they're not sort of middle class, they will try to get their child out there just because of the name. They don't care if it's good or not. Right, but because of the reputation, you're going. Even if you don't want to go, you're going, right? And then that sort of gets driven from, you know, 11, 12 years old, mm -hmm. right? It's really weird. I wouldn't say just for the, on my point of view, uh, the reason why I would want to go for these big companies is just to see how did they become so successful and what is behind the scenes. Yep. And I want to, I'm more interested in the why are they successful and I'm pretty sure the reason why they're so successful, it reflects from the way they've been working. Mm. Uh, mm. And until I don't see it, I'm just going to be wondering, oh, how does that work? How is it? Sure, sure. I just want to experience it. I don't think the credibility matters as much to me. Mm. Uh, I am the kind of person that thinks that to be successful, you don't need uh, the credibility. You don't need to be the best at school. You don't need to go to the best schools or work for the best companies. Um, because 
I mean, you've seen a lot of people who say, "Oh, I dropped out of college, and now、right. I made Facebook." <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, it, it it wouldn't be about that. It's just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's just out of curiosity. I think that's a better way to look at it. Yeah, versus having these name brands because maybe it's a fallacy. Maybe it's just not as good as、yeah. where you are now or whatever, right? I mean, Asian families. I'm pretty sure they are more. Um, starstruck by oh yeah, my is <laughs> this is the same thing that we talk about in the last episode,、uh, the bragging rights. Yeah, totally. Like now it's not like your doctors and lawyers, right? Now it's like he works for Facebook. Who hasn't、yeah. heard of Facebook? Exactly. Like who wants to be a doctor? Nobody <laughs> wants to be a doctor now. It's fucking boring. You're gonna stay in the hospital for sixteen hours a day. Work at Facebook. It's cool with free lunches. I、yeah. can live on campus. Like whatever, right? VR headsets. Like whatever. Right, like there's、yeah. a shift in bragging rights, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Now I'm pretty sure that ah.、Uh, so finally,、um, my mom learned how to describe my job. Yes. How <laughs> does she describe it? She she used to say, oh, she makes mobile games, and people would come to me and say, oh, so you make the graphics? And I'm like, no. So you programmer? No. <laughs> Come on! And then I had to tell mom, this is not my job. My job is we accelerate game studios, which means you know we give money, we try to find studios,、uh, we help them marketing wise. And she, I I don't know. I had to tell her so many times. <laughs> I had to break it down. This is how it works. And she finally got it. So now she started bragging to the family. Oh yeah, she gives money to people. <laughs> She gives money to people for a living. Wow, Mother it, Teresa. It, it, it changed.、Right、from, it changed from she makes mobile video games. So she gives money to people now.、But、I guess that's more accurate, huh? It is more accurate. <laughs> one step at a time, Jessica. One step at a time.、Uh, and then when I will change my job, it's gonna be、oh, it's gonna be again this process. That's so funny. That's great. That's great. I mean, like I would be interested. In terms of how you would describe your design job to her, I think.、Oh. Do you think that's easier? No, it. I think it's harder. Okay. It's it's a bunch of things. Is the fact it's the culture、um, barrier and the language barrier. I would say she does speak Italian, but it's not perfect. And I've been learning, and I've been doing my job in English, which means that there's、uh, miscommunication there. Plus, she comes from another generation where these kind of jobs didn't that they, they were non-existent. Right. If I tell her I make user experiences, so you you know, so you know how to <laughs> use intuitively your phone, she will look at me like, ah,、uh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you mean UI? <laughs> Do you mean the graphics? Like, uh, yeah, leave it. I'm pretty sure she doesn't know the word UI. <laughs> sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well,、uh, yeah. How I describe it to、uh, older people is like, you know how, yeah, I just pull up their phone and they're like, oh, you know, you see how this works.、Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I do, right? That's easy. But there's so much. Every time she asks me, oh, what did you do at work? I I just don't know how to explain it without having to explain <laughs> the whole. Thing. Why did I take this decision? Why did I do this? Why did I talk to this client? There's, I can tell. Her, yeah, yeah, I talked to this client because we are trying to publish a game. And then, what is a publisher? Why? <laughs> why am I trying to get the the, the studio a publisher and stuff? Like, it's just. It's so it's funny. <laughs> just one generation has that sort of communication gap. Can you imagine if we tried to talk to aliens? They have no knowledge of like anything <laughs>、yeah. of humanity and our technology and how we think. Yeah, or even talking to animals. How how are you gonna explain your job to like a lion? It's so、oh、funny,、God. right? Just like even if they could talk,、uh, you wouldn't understand what they're saying just because of the information gaps. It would take ages. It it's even complicated between people to understand each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think a lot of people that like not in our field are like, "What is it? <laughs> what do you yeah. do?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only because we. Find it so normal.、Uh, we talk about stuff like this, but others are just like, whatever, dude. Like, I, I don't get it.、I、don't get it. Yeah, it's quite interesting. That's so true.、Mm. Tech, it's even among tech, it's. I'm talking about games, but you know, you're in fintech, so there's so many differences. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I bet. 
I would love to work in games actually. Games would be the coolest. The coolest. I know. That's one thing. Uh, whenever I meet new people, I'm just, yeah, working video games. Especially if they're guys. If I say this, they're like, you're so cool. <laughs> like, yes, I know. <laughs> what do you think about the company Valve? What do you mean? Valve? The inventors of Half Life? Oh, Valve. I, I heard Valves. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my English is terrible. <laughs> That's a, the native English speaker. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Recognize the sarcasm. Uh, what do I think about Valve? Uh, they've been a big player in the industry. Uh, they made Dota. They you know, they run Steam, basically. They reinvented how games are sold and played yeah. because of Steam. What do I think about them? Please <laughs> hire me. Um, did you know <laughs> Please take me. Do you know they're releasing a, a new game? Uh, a new VR game one of the first A grade VR games out there on the market uh, and it's going to be fully VR I can't remember the name of it what? why do I not know about it? Yeah, I oh, don't follow oh, VR dude, much dude, to it's going to be it's going to be well given their reputation they're going to be the basically the like you know one of the games companies to watch right? mm -hmm. especially because VR hasn't really hit off yeah there's a lot of applications and people have been trying to do it it's a mm. bit of a novelty mm. but yes they are releasing a new vr game i think in 2020 half-life right. vr game it could be half-life i think but they haven't released a game in years yeah. so this could be a game changer and if this pops off then it then it's validation for the vr gaming market that people would actually pick this up and play it hmm that's crazy i don't believe much in vr to be honest <gasps> uh because uh user wise it's it's too much of a cost barrier to get a vr um to get the vr set up yeah plus uh it's a space i cannot buy I, I could buy a vr setup but i don't have the space to play do you think it's a, a technologically thing? So like it's going to get better over time, things are going to get smaller, like the phones, right? Phones used to be huge, yeah. then in the space of 10 years it just became super small, put it in your pocket. It will get better, 100% sure. In the future there is a place for VR, but it's not now. Yeah. And it's not going to be, I am assuming it's not going to be for the next two to three years. Yeah. Uh, it's a technology that it's great, but for what they're trying to achieve, it's still so much behind. Mm. Like just look at the sci-fi movies. What's it? Uh, Ready, uh, Ready Player One. Oh my God, that's amazing. The thing that they are trying to achieve uh, is just crazy, and we are just achieving that level now on a normal computer game, and it took ages. Right. If you but. I mean, there's been leaps and everything, but I think uh, it's still going to take a long time. At least two to three years. That's my assumption. So what are the awesome VR headsets out now? Or what are the industry ones? Like, there's Oculus from Facebook. Mm -hmm. There's Microsoft's one. What's that called? There's tons. There's, there's a bunch, HTC, right? HTC, there's Google, yeah. like the Google Cardboard. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's tons. So... Apple are releasing one, and they've announced in 2021 to 22. So, you know, Apple traditionally is late to the game in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. Like, and then they, they, you know, they brand it something like amazing, yeah. right? Like, like Touch ID and Face ID, all this stuff. <laughs> For $999. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, do you think it just takes, like, a better execution by a company? Uh, and maybe, you know, in 2021 or 22, people might have kind of, been more familiar with VR and therefore you know it's it's more mass market production wise because you know Apple releases awesome fucking products like mm. you know mm. pretty much like all the products they release yeah they've has, been has doing hit. well lately yeah for the last have 20 you years seen their right? revenues? <laughs> yeah exactly right so maybe it'll just take a, a good company mm -hmm. to to back it and like Valve is a good company in terms of game like making games right so maybe this is the first step to VR. One thing I heard, um, I think it was uh, released by Facebook recently, is 
that uh, Mark Zuck talked about like um, some initiatives right for the next couple of years, and one of them was VR, but it's not in the gaming space; it's in the enterprise world. So right now we're talking about remote work and all that stuff, right? And we feel kind of like, oh, we can go, and we can jump on conference calls and hang out and whatever, but it's still kind of shitty. But imagine if we can just put on this headset and everybody in the room is in the room, and it, but everybody's remote, right? And then you see face-to-face -face avatars. Like they also have this avatar thing, right, on Oculus. So th that's potentially where they're taking the technology in terms of like video conferencing because video conferencing is not that great i mean there's one company that came uh up recently which is zoom I oh don't yeah. Know you, yeah. Yeah, yeah like you have you used blue jeans i've used it oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. It? Yeah, yeah it's terrible right and then like zoom is like this huge company now you know it's taken over in terms of video conferencing mm -hmm. but that can't just be it it's still shit it is <laughs> like, it is like you can call from your mobile yeah that's great but like it's not great right you still feel like you're looking at the screen but mm. maybe the next application or, or where it'll really pick up would be facebook's bet on enterprise i think that would be super cool i would love that i think i am still more traditional in that you're a face-to-face -face? i am a face-to-face -face person i i am pretty much I mean, technology i am a huge fan i think that i am the first person who would want to spend tons of money on the new technology on the newest technology always but there are some things that i would rather keep irl <laughs> in reality well like dating like dating oh damn nah, man. tinder imagine, ruined imagine, my life <laughs> no imagine imagine tinder vr imagine like you could have like a 10 minute Ooh. convo before you meet this creepy person because you can find out if they're awkward or not like, well, isn't that like texting in a way? You know, you can fake so much when you're no. not there. Yeah, but you don't like the game is that there's so many like copy and paste text messages out there. Mm. So it's like maybe the first line is great, and then like I don't know. I had a friend that had a bunch of these things, right? Mm. Uh, just like literally a library of messages he could send girls, and some of them worked, some of them didn't. But like there was a lot of these copy and paste. It's not. And also texting is pretty fake instead of like mm. real time, even if not face to face, but real time interaction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I would. U no, I would definitely try and use it, but I don't know if it would be good. But just throwing it out there, I guess. <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> think I would like it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Tinder VR, not a fan. Tinder VR, uh, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Bubble VR, bubble VR. Bumble VR, huh? Maybe. <laughs> why? Why? But not Tinder VR. Like, hmm, Grindr your, your VR. <laughs> your avatar looks great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna talk to you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's been one hour. Okay. Cool. I guess we can end it here. Yeah. So where can we f find you, Jessica? Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram under the name of Stormtroopy. S T O R M. T R. <laughs> Troopy, just <laughs> Troopy. Yeah, Troopy. 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 Like Stormtrooper, but Storm it's like Troopy. A storm tro it's like but a IE, right? Yeah, yeah, IE. It's like a think of a cute Stormtrooper, and that's me. Yeah, there you go. I also have the terrible aim, so it's perfect. Okay, there you go, <laughs> there you go. And you can find me at Semi Grown Kid, at Semi Grown Kid, pretty much everywhere, or just show notes, show notes, show notes. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. Try. Let's drink this wine and uh, we'll see you next time. See you. Peace.